go to school, get good grades, get a good job. That's what you're told from day one as you go throughout grade school, community college, university, and so on. So you wake up early every morning, you get up and you get ready for school from age five to age 18 without really having a purpose for doing so outside of just knowing that this is what you were supposed to do. Then you graduate. And that's when the overwhelming two word question that hits everybody at the same time hits you and it knocks the wind out of you. That's a feeling you will never forget. It might even haunt you for the rest of your life. That question is now what? I remember asking myself, you mean to tell me I've been going to school, getting up early every morning, going from classroom to classroom for six, seven hours a day for all these years. And at the end of it all, we still don't know what it is that we want to do. Are you kidding me? Not even just that. That's not even the worst part. I remember the sleepless nights of studying, thinking that my life depended on me doing well and passing all my classes, having that pressure to be something. Yet, I had no concept of what being something actually was. What is a good job anyway? I guess that's the bigger issue behind this video that you'll see throughout. We don't question these things enough at all. Maybe it's because you knew that your question would be shut down immediately. Or maybe you just thought you'd look stupid for asking such a question. You might have even knew that your question would have been met with silence, leaving you even more confused than you were before you asked the question in the first place. Trust me, I know the feeling, because I'm someone who's always questioned everything. But the only problem with that is, nine times out of ten, those questions usually remained in my head unanswered until I learned the hard way, years later, either through my own experiences or someone else's. Why didn't school teach me this? That was one of the many questions that I used to ask myself. And before I take you down this long path of questions and thoughts that we've all been thinking, I'm going to take you on a journey that most people don't start until it's too late. I remember hearing about all the jobs that didn't pay enough, which seemed like pretty much every job. But the same people who were complaining about their jobs not paying enough had also gotten good grades in school and went to college. Hmm. Those people were teachers, clerks, social workers, nurses, managers, the list goes on. As a matter of fact, there were only two jobs that I knew of that were known to actually pay you well. And you probably already thought of what those two jobs are by now, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Those jobs were lawyers and doctors. This is the part where everything completely shatters, by the way. Just remember those words, lawyers and doctors. My first thought about this was probably similar to yours. Okay, so why doesn't everyone just go to law school or medical school and just become one? Well, you know, it's really hard to do that. Okay, and it's hard for me to get out of bed in the morning, but I do it. What, it's so hard so no one does it? Well, you know, it's just really boring and it's really hard and competitive to get into those types of schools. Needless to say, I really didn't see the point of outlining a few obstacles that should prevent most people from going for these quote unquote good jobs. And my second thought was, well, if everyone's complaining about their bills and not having enough money, then how did they get their shiny new cars? How could they afford such nice houses with TVs and entertainment systems? How are they always able to provide for their kids and then some? How is it that they always have food? No, not just any food. I remember seeing kids get dropped off by their parents at school every day or even pulling up in their own cars every day. And nine times out of 10, they were showing off a fresh bag of McDonald's with that good cup of OJ that they would take to every single class with them as if they were sipping on it all day just to show everybody that they had some McDonald's this morning. That's <laughs> like not even an exaggeration. But yeah, those questions surged into my head, but this time I actually asked them out loud and I noticed something very interesting. For some reason, I've noticed this weird pattern growing up. Whenever I asked questions that actually made sense, it really frustrated people. I knew I was onto something whenever I would get excuses that had nothing to do with my question. Well, they're the adult, they grown, they got jobs, they can do whatever they wanna do. Yeah, I get that, but I'm asking how are they able to afford these things if they barely have money at the end of the month? You'll understand when you're older. Now stop asking questions. I was just simply trying to understand how these parents could afford to buy their kids new Jordans every single week. How these teachers in their early 20s are able to pull up to the school in their brand new Camaros. Having the latest, newest smartphones and everything else, but they don't get paid enough? I just felt like I was living in an oxymoron that no one wanted to address. I would have respected it so much more if someone had just told me they're simply mismanaging their money. I would have appreciated it so much more if I knew up front all those years ago that the same people complaining on a weekly basis about the money they didn't have 
simply didn't know what to do with it. Which takes me back to the question that we've all asked ourselves at some point. Why didn't school teach me this? But first we have to ask what the purpose of school is. The way I see it, school prepares us to get a job that then pays us money. So if you're gonna show us how to get a job that gives us money, why not show us what to do with that money once we get it so we can, you know, live happy, stress-free lives? What school should have taught you about money is simply heartbreaking and mind-numbing because it is so simple. School should have taught you exactly what salary you could expect to make when going into certain fields, or at least where to look accurately so you could figure it out for yourself. Some schools do that. Good job. There's only everything else I'm about to go over in this video that they're not doing. They also should have taught you how not to get lowballed in an interview as you progress throughout your career. And how the salary you'll be making is going to compare to the area you live in and how much it costs to live there. So that way you'll know how much spending money you can expect to have or how broke you can expect to be. I remember taking on engineering in college and being very disappointed by the number on the lower end of the range of the salary that I could expect to be making. Because that was a degree that I was working relentlessly for. And in an attempt to cheer us up, our professors would go on to say, you know, you get pay bumps about every five years and, you know, by year 15 or 20, you can expect to be in the six figure range, which was good by their standards, not mine. And that's something else. This whole concept of six figures should be broken down in such a way that any student can understand. What does six figures actually mean? How much is that a month? How much is going to be taken away after taxes? And how many people who make six figures a year actually make more than the stereotypical $100,000 a year? Instead of focusing on telling us that we could expect to have our dream salary 20 freaking years later, school should have just taught you how to start off strong so you could actually prepare for those pay increases as you go on. So that way you aren't upgrading your lifestyle every single time you get more pay. So much to the point that you're spending and saving the exact same amount of money you were before you got the raise. Bruh. That ain't no raise. That is an illusion of luxury that will quickly go away the moment you miss a paycheck. Why can't anyone be this forward about money as we're growing up and learning about everything else? I mean, I really ask myself these questions because it's almost as if I was conditioned to think that school was the only way to position myself to make money. Good money. Whatever that means. They used to tell me in high school that you pretty much have to go to college if you ever want to be something. There goes that word again. Something, which is synonymous with successful. And I was given this message by people who themselves did not know what success meant to them. And I know because I have several guidance counselors, teachers, and professors on my Facebook. And I've seen a lot of them express that they were in their 40s and up and didn't know what to do with their lives. Reading that is just like stepping outside of the matrix and realizing that everything you thought you knew is questionable. And I just remember my guidance counselors and even my parents say, college is the rest of your life. Choose carefully. Even if you didn't go to college, this is going to make sense to you, bro. They make it seem like going to school for a specific field is a permanent decision. Like, you can never just up and change your mind. The very place that tells you not to put all your eggs in one basket is the same place that will have you think that you should stick with one field, one subject matter, for the rest of your life. But what most of us don't realize is it's not so much that the choice of where you want to go, what field you want to be in, that's going to affect the rest of your life. It's actually your indecision that is bred from your parents' dreams that they're trying to live through you. When I was in school, I watched parents ruin more dreams than failure and dropouts combined. These were parents who either paid for their kids' schooling and held that over their heads as if it was some type of leverage that they could use as a weapon to gaslight their kids to do whatever they wanted them to do. Or it was the parents who used their disappointment to push their kids into doing whatever they wanted them to do, whether they paid for their schooling or not. What they typically wanted their kids to do was to either become a lawyer or a doctor. I watched a lot of my friends go through this, so that's how I know. I just remember seeing a lot of my friends and acquaintances crying, breaking down over this. You know, you know, when they always had this look in their eyes, the look of confusion, like they were questioning every single move they made. This poured into multiple areas of their lives, and then it became very clear to me that they had problems with indecision. And as an adult, you simply can't be indecisive, especially when it comes to decisions that are made at the expense of your future livelihood, which just so happens to be directly tied with the amount of happiness, stress, and sanity you have in your life. Just imagine putting your all into something that you don't truly have your heart into, only to still come up short on your grades and being ridiculed by your parents who automatically assume that your grades were so low because you weren't paying attention or you were partying too much in school. 
Then imagine losing all the confidence you thought you had because you weren't living up to the expectations that you didn't set for yourself in the first place. You start to rethink your decisions and you start to think about changing your major, but your parents catch wind of it and they threaten to stop paying for you to go to school if you do. That was the reality a lot of the students around me were facing. And as a man who loves both of his parents, I can proudly and confidently say, I wish my parents would. That mess would not fly. School should have taught you the price of being indecisive. How valuing what your parents want for you more than what you want for yourself can cost you a price much greater than any amount of college debt or overworking yourself at a low paying job as you struggle to pay your bills. They should have told you how psychologically damaging it is to constantly hear the voices and opinions of your parents and others in your head playing out over and over again as they take over your own thoughts to the point where you're unable to decipher your thoughts from theirs. How crippling it is to know in your soul that you want to be doing something different, but instead you're trapped in the desires that other people have for you. Then you mess around and you go through with it. You actually make the decision to change your major. But you decided to do this last minute on your last year of college. Now magically you have three years left of school. But for the first three years of school, you were just so sure that you wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor so you could make the big bucks. Only now, your debt is going to triple and you won't be making the big bucks, will you? Why does school not teach you how expensive it is to constantly switch between majors not knowing what you want? Why is it not broken down mathematically how much it'll cost to go to these expensive schools compared to what salary you'll make as a lawyer fresh out of law school or a doctor fresh out of medical school? That way you'll know just how worth it it is to put yourself through all those years of school, all those years of stress and studying. That way you'll have an idea of how long you can expect for it to be before you actually get out of your debt. But instead, you find out years later. Now what? And what's even worse about this is they focus on you having a whopping one stream of income. One. I'm sure you've heard growing up just how secure jobs are. I remember hearing my parents, my friends' parents, and everyone else saying that you've got to get a good job because good jobs are secure. And anyone else who had opposing dreams of being an artist, an athlete, or a rapper were just wasting their time because none of those were secure. But no, no. Focus on this one secure stream of income. Yeah, that makes sense. Put all of your energy, all of your effort, all of your everything into this one stream of income because businesses never fire people or lay people off. Businesses stay in business forever. Focus on this one stream of income where the only chance you have of making more money is either getting a raise or working overtime. Or they could have simply told you that while you're working your job, you can also pursue your passions, your talents, your hobbies, your dreams, and just see what comes of it. In other words, start a side hustle. You might even be able to make a few other streams of income out of it. That puts more money, more security in your pocket as you let it pile up in your bank account as you pretend that it doesn't even exist. But how often do you hear schools talk about getting a side hustle? And I'm not talking about a second job either because one thing about it is I've never met a person who has two or more jobs that makes more than someone with just one job. Much less I've never seen someone with two jobs make a lot of money period. And what they don't tell you is side hustles are actually a great release, a great way to find purpose, make a profit, and add value to the world. I have a side hustle and I find a lot of fulfillment in it and I've made thousands of dollars doing it and I only wish I would have got it started earlier. But at the time, all my energy was just going to my job. That was it. Because that is what was going to make me successful. That's how my sick mind worked back then. My definition of success was warped by those who themselves did not know what success meant. What's the point of making a lot of money and going for these good jobs if everyone's just gonna be struggling to pay their bills anyway, no matter what job they have. When you're making all that money, what do you do with all of it? They could at least tell you about investing. Secure investment, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, index funds, Roth IRAs, what a 401k is, how to properly spread your money between your checking, your savings, and your investment accounts. But how much of that sounded like gibberish to you? If it did sound like gibberish, you're not alone and it's not your fault, but school should have taught you that. Like, if you're planning on working the next 40 plus years, wouldn't you like to know what you're working for? That would be retirement. And your retirement isn't built in a savings account. It's built in one of those many investment options that I just talked about, and it gets built over the course of decades. If this doesn't happen, you'll try to retire, 
but it'll end up being the same way that most people graduate from high school with the question that will now haunt you for the rest of your life. Now what? If school systems only spent the amount of time going over these things that they do when they lecture you about how hard the real world is, maybe the real world wouldn't be so hard. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got value out of it. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share this video, tell some friends about it. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.